From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lawan Jira Suladet. Have you found your drinking tap water tastes a bit blackish lately? Since the beginning of 2021, more than half a bank of population are turning their taps water on to find that their water supply has unpleasant salty taste. According to Metropolitan Water Works Authority, or MWA, which is the state-owned agency that supplies tap water for people in the capital and its suburban areas, the saltiness in Bangkok drinking tap water is caused by intrusion of salt water from the Gulf of Thailand into Chao Phraya River, the major library of Thailand, due to the lower flow of the river during dry seasons. Because Thailand still does not equip with the technology to filter out saline during tap water production, if salt water from the Gulf of Thailand intrudes far enough into the river, reaches the main raw water pumping station known as Samla Station in Patum Thani province in the northern suburb of Bangkok, and causing the salinity level at this station to rise above the salinity standard for tap water production at 0.5 gram per liter. Half the areas of Bangkok metropolis on the east bank of Chao Phraya River, which are using water from this water pumping station, will eventually be affected by salty tap water. While Department of Health under Ministry of Public Health has ensured that consuming salty tap water is adding up only a little more salt intake to our body, and there is no imminent threat to healthy people. Doctors have warned that this is not the case for everyone. A small amount of salt from salty drinking water can be harmful to the health of certain groups of vulnerable people, including infants, elderly, and those who have heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes, and hypertension. Although Bangkok has repeatedly suffered from this problem once every few years, data from the Water Quality Monitoring System of Royal Irrigation Department reveals that the current salt water intrusion problem in Bangkok is far worse than any other years. Since 2019, Bangkok has repeatedly suffered from severe salinity intrusion for three years in a row. Records show that during January and February 2021, the salinity level in Jabaya River almost always stay above the recommended standard of 0.5 gram per liter. It was also found that at the end of January 2021, the salinity level at Samla Water Pumping Station soared to as high as 2.53 grams per liter, or five times higher than the recommended standard, breaking a new record for the highest salinity level ever measured at this station since 2007. Up until March 2021, the salinity level at the Samla Station nearly 100 kilometers away from the sea, is still concerningly high. As there is not enough storage water in the upstream dams to push back salt water, Bangkokians have to wait until the rain returns later in the year, so the salinity will drop to a normal level. High salinity level in Chao Phraya River is not only affecting tap water production, but could also harm agriculture produce and manufacturing industries. A salinity level that is above 2 grams per liter is damaging to plants, while salty tap water is also destructive to metal parts and machineries. This issue is not limited to Bangkok Metropolis and Chao Phraya River alone, but it is a widespread problem throughout the coastal areas of Thailand with even severer impacts and lesser public awareness on the problem. For instance, the salt water has intruded far greater inland, 
into Bang Pagong River, the major bloodline for the eastern region of Thailand, for over 115 kilometers from the delta, with the salinity level up to 7.34 gram per liter, or almost 15 times higher than the recommended level. As the situation of salt water intrusion and salty tap water shows no sign to be resolved soon. Today, we are welcoming Dr. Natawin Chawalert Ponsiya, an environmental engineer from Faculty of Engineering, Jularongkorn University. Unlock the Sign reporter, Brat Luchi Wanarom, talks to him to further discuss the detail of this situation. Okay, Dr. Natawin, what is the current situation of saltwater intrusion and when can we expect that the problem will be resolved? Okay. Uh, in fact, we are currently in the period where the saltwater intrusion is highest of this year. Uh, it, it, it is expected at first that we will have two periods where the saltwater intrusion will be very strong. Uh, the first is uh, during the early of February and the second one during the middle of February until middle mar of March. So uh, I think there will be a lot of factors affecting the, the situation, so it's quite difficult to, to predict. When uh, this uh, so water intrusion uh, situation will be relieved, but normally because of some of the factors is related to the uh, quantity of rain. So it could be predict that maybe during the rainy season, the problem of the salt water intrusion could be relieved. But uh, maybe it is quite fortunate for us because it is predict from the for many experts that maybe this year the rainy season could come earlier than than expect. So it, uh, uh, I think it is safe to say that maybe the first rain could be uh, in the, during the late of April, which is quite uh, I think it is earlier because normally for the rainy season it start from May. So it could expect maybe at the end of April the salt water intrusion could not have any effects on the tap water quality. As we have noticed that uh, the current salt water intrusion is far more severe than previous years, what are the driving factors behind this current phenomenon, and why this year's salt water intrusion is so grave? Mm. Uh, I think, uh, as as I mentioned before, there is a lot of factors affecting the this situation, but uh, at first, I think. <coughs> Uh, everyone have to know that this uh, salt water intrusion could be the most severe in 10 years. So I think since uh, to 2010 to this day, this year have the most, uh, maybe the most severe of the salt water intrusion come from many, many factors. The first factor is come from the global phenomena on the climate change and also the El, <coughs> El Nio phenomenon. Uh, the second one is come from the drought problem because uh, I think many one have noticed that we are in the mm -hmm. in the period where I think maybe three years uh, already that we have uh, maybe uh, under average rainfall mm -hmm. so we the, the water storage in the system is quite short so that affect a lot on the on salt water intrusion because normally we need uh, water from the irrigation and from the, for the system to push the salt water and avoid the intrusion. So when we don't we don't have enough water, so there are a lot of problems on the salt water intrusion. And the last thing is when we have not enough or insufficient water, but we still have high demand of water from many activities uh, due to the economic uh, drive. So these three all together come from come to the effects on the highest salt water intrusion of this year. Apart from suspect health threat from drinking salty tap water, what is the other problem that salt water intrusion can cause? So, the first sector that have a lot of problems from the salt water intrusion is agriculture. So, during the high salinity period or very really high sal uh, salt water intrusion, there is a lot of problems on crops. Uh, for example, there are some reports uh, suggesting that durian in Nontaburi, that is one area of the that affects from the salt water intrusion, they have some problems on the growing of the, the fruit. Mm -hmm. There is the first sector. And second sector is on industry. Because normally for the industry, they need high quality water to do uh, to for their process, especially for the cooling process. 
for the, uh, making the water to the cooling water that have uh, strictly they have to strictly control the ion content in water. So in case that we have high salinity in in tap water, that is raw water to produce the cooling water, the problems come to the process because the process have to receive higher loading and could have some effects. If the industry they will not adjust or adapt the process to uh, counter this situation. There will have a lot of problem in the cooling process because there will be a lot of scaling inside and that could uh, come to the process failure. And the last thing uh, in the household level, apart from the health impact, we also uh, uh, thinking about uh, there could be some damage from the salinity because I think everyone know that in the high salinity condition, uh, some metal parts could be damaged by the corrosion. So that will be another thing that we think in the household level could have some effect from the high water salinity condition. Okay. And how can we mitigate the current salt water intrusion problem? Uh, I, I think for them to mitigate this salt water intrusion is quite difficult things. We it have to think a lot and maybe in a macro scale because it have to uh, deal with the infrastructure level. But uh, I think if uh, for the really short term, it's about individuals to how to manage the risks of the people or of the water usage to avoid the effect of the of the salt water. And I think for the middle term and long term, there could be some things that we need to uh, discuss with each other for the government, for the uh, water authorities who produce uh, water supply, and for the users or for of, or of the people that use water, we need to make some decision all together and give together to to make sure that uh, the future of the salt water intrusion could not affect us. As a citizen, how can we avoid the risk of consuming and using salty tap water? If we uh, if we still have to use uh, tap water to uh, produce the drinking water for daily life, we can have some tricks, right? Like uh, we can sh uh, we can store the, the water during the low salinity period. Highest salinity of water uh, of tap water can be found during the afternoon. So from two p.m. to four p.m. is maybe the most or the peak salinity. So in in case that we need to store that water for the drinking water production we can avoid that period. So maybe we can start storage, uh, store the, our water during the morning and using that one to, uh, uh, to make sure that we still have some low salinity water. And the last one, uh, in case that uh, we have the process uh, to ask for the water purification in household, we can uh, use the, some technology for uh, the so-called RO or the reverse osmosis. This is maybe the only one process right now in the commercial one that can be used household to remove uh, sodium chloride and remove salinity from water to make the, to make sure that the water that we uptake or drink every day is safe. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. The recent acceleration of salt water intrusion is not only limited to Thailand, but many coastal areas across the globe are also encountering with this happening. Assumptions have been made as the scientific community tries to explain this phenomenon, and the most prominent suspect is climate change. Reports from the World Bank have highlighted that the severity can be increasingly aggravated in the near future, as the global temperature continues to warm up, the salt water intrusion is likely to become severer globally. This is causing imminent threat to millions of people who reside in the fertile river deltas and low-lying coastal areas, which are prone to salt water intrusion. Creeping salinity due to rising sea water threatens to cause further shortage of fresh water for consumption and irrigation and harm the aquatic ecosystems. We have already seen some of the examples of this phenomenon in our neighboring countries. In February 2021, Vietnam News Agency, VNA, reported that Mekong River Delta in southern Vietnam 
has suffered severe saltwater intrusion problem due to drought and lower water discharge from upstream dams. The situation has resulted in extensive crop damages and caused drinking water shortage among large numbers of local populations. Unlock Design reporter Brat Luchiwanarom gets back to Dr. Natawin Chawalert Ponsia of Faculty of Engineering, Jilalongkorn University, for more details about this issue. Do you agree with the assessment of the World Bank that the warming of the Earth would exacerbate saltwater intrusion? And how do you think the problem will develop in the future? Um, I, I think uh, individually I agree with, with uh, this discussion because uh, there is some evidence that uh, climate change have uh, effects on the saltwater intrusion. The first one is the sea level rise. I think everyone know that uh, during the climate change or the global warming, there, there has a lot of uh, ice on the polar that melt and that affect the sea, le- sea water level. So it could be safe to say that if we are still increasing with this, this rate, the sea water level intru- sea water level could be increased and that affect a lot on the sea water intrusion. This is the first one. And the second one, uh, d- during this year that we have uh, m- maybe the most severe sea water intrusion d- in, in 10 years, it's come from one, uh, one phenomena, it's called El Nio, that uh, make the rainfall in, in Thailand is uh, uh, shorter than its average. And there is some evidence, uh, scientific support, that say that the El Nio uh, damage could be more severe if the climate change develops in this, in this direction. So that, that could be the, the problem because if we have uh, maybe stronger effect of the El Nio, we can have maybe the longer drought years. And that can come to the problems of the insufficient water for the eco, eco and hydrological condition maintenance in the downstream. What should we do to prepare and prevent saltwater intrusion problem in the long run? Okay, um, I think for 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 this question, I have to separate the uh, the mitigation to three part. The first part is for the for the government because. Um, uh, the government have to plan for a long term how to mitigate or how to manage the saltwater intrusion that I think it could it could be uh, someday quite a normal problem. The first thing that they need to think about uh, how to manage the water usage on the upstream. For example, uh, right now we have a lot of the saltwater intrusion because we have a high water high sea water level and we also have high consumption of water on the, on the upstream. Uh, like in Chapaya River, that we have a lot of uh, agricultural activities around the around the river. So, in case that if we cannot manage the activities, so we do uh, pull out the water from the system, and then the salt water can uh, intrude, maybe high and high inland. So, in the in the future, if we can manage to make sure that we uh, uh, separate or do the good proportion between each sectors. Uh, agriculture, they can produce crops uh, during the their good season. They will not do the uh, off-season rice or something like that. So we can make sure that okay, the water is still enough to maintain the condition uh, uh, downstream. This is the first one, and the second one uh, maybe the government would have to think how to find the second or maybe the reserve uh, water supply to. To make sure that uh, in, even in the very high or during the salt water intrusion, there will still be a good uh, raw water source that they can li- rely on. So maybe we need to think about how to find the other source. Maybe come from another river. There is some plan. Think about uh, using the rivers from Mekong River because Mekong River is quite high uh, uh, comparing to Shaopaya River, and we, they have a uh, quite uh, smaller effects on the salt water intrusion. So, uh, finding the new uh, raw water source and also uh, uh, moving their pumping station is could be one key of things that they they, have to, they need to think about. For the water works, they also they need to think about how to adapt or how to apply the technology that right now is ready to use for removing the salinity from water. But I think because one one limitation is about the cost and. Uh, 
uh, capital that they need to to provide. So maybe it's about uh, negotiation about the cost of the water production and water selling price that is uh, affordable by many peoples and still have the good quality. And the last one for for the user or the end user as us. Maybe it's about the same thing that I already uh, answered in the previous question about how to prevent the effects and how to provide like uh, using the technology for the water purification in the household. And also um, maybe we can help by the water saving to, to make sure that we have enough water during the drought season and rainy season. As an individual, what do you think we should do to help prevent the climate crisis? So uh, I think uh, the relation between the salt water intrusion and the climate crisis is quite clear. So, But it's not only the climate crisis that can uh, come into equation when we think about the salt water intrusion. As I said earlier, it's about the mitigation, how to avoid effects of the of the salt water intrusion. But in case we want to prevent, it's, about, it's another story. If we want to avoid uh, the climate crisis, we, knew we need to use or consume energy effectively because uh, energy factor is one of the most part causing the global warming due to the carbon emission. And if we think, okay, if we understand this too, okay, the water, the good water efficiency can reduce the effect of the climate, uh, can reduce the cost of the climate crisis. Energy efficiency is also one another. And the last one, because when we talk about water, it's about food also. Okay, the one thing that we can do can help to reduce the climate crisis is on how to how to how we manage food effectively. So it's come from the food production that we need to use the water efficiently for for the food production, and also individuals for many people for all of us, we can help preventing the climate crisis by. Uh, reducing the food waste because I think this this one is quite a little bit um, far from the salt water intuition but it's, it's quite very clear that uh, right now for the food waste is account to around 10% of greenhouse gas emissions so it means that if we manage, manage food waste well we can save water to growing it and we also can reduce the effect of uh, greenhouse gas emission from the food waste so uh, in the case that we can and uh, we understand the nexus between uh, food, water, and energy, we can think about how we, how can we manage this uh, essential resource very well that can use to prevent the greenhouse gas uh, emission uh, to to reduce the climate crisis, and they also use they are, is very useful to prevent the or relieve the effect of salt water intrusion in the future. So. This is one thing that individuals have to have to know, and from this from this concept, we can think a lot how to behave. Like uh, we have to use the water efficiency, uh, less water efficiency by saving. We have to reduce our transportation. We have to manage the food waste really well. Something like that. So it come from the, uh, taking the concept, the understanding into action. That it could be key from the climate crisis relief, and then for the salt water intrusion in the future. From a small hint of saltiness in Bangkokian's drinking tap water, we have learned that the rising of global temperature can have profound impacts on the overall ecosystems, which can contaminate our drinking and irrigation water supplies with salinity. We have many means to cope with this problem, such as introducing reverse osmosis technology to filter drinking water, moving raw water pumping stations further upstream, or just wisely managing water supply to make sure that we have enough fresh water supply. We also need to consider the bigger picture of this problem. The delicate connectivity of all the things in the natural world is a clear reminder to us to be mindful of the consequences of our activities or we will eventually suffer the consequence of our doing. The salt water intrusion, whose cause at first seemed completely beyond our control, shows us that the human-driven climate change is a major contributing factor behind this problem. Similarly, as we are trying to find a way to safeguard our water security, 
The path we have to follow is also to take care of the environment as a whole. And this, we would like to mark the end of today's program. Unlock Design would like to thank Dr. Natawin c h a w a l e r p o n s i y a from Department of Environmental Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, Jularongkorn University, for his insight on saltwater intrusion and climate change. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jular Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1:30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jular.ac.th, and our Facebook page. And our program is also available as podcast. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. <laughs>